Hi folks, welcome back to the Social Television Network. I'm Chris Caraggio, joined today by Dr. Samit Mittal. He is the Surgical Director of Esophageal Diseases over at Norton Thoracic Dignity Health. Doctor, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Let's talk about acid reflux disease. That is the topic. Let me just first correct you. I, I take exception to it being called acid reflux disease. Okay. It is gastroesophageal reflux disease, meaning the contents of the stomach are coming up into the esophagus and causing symptoms. The pH or the acidity is just one component of the symptoms, um, but okay. stuff is still coming up. So GERD or just reflux disease? Yes. Um, chronic sufferers of this, how do we know? Because so many of us are taking over-the-counter medication um, for these symptoms. Are, are, are we doing the right thing? Well, you know, if you take it on as-needed basis, it's pretty much fair that if you have something, um, uh, something to eat and that cause reflux and you take an, uh, take an antacid, mm -hmm. that's good enough. But if you're taking on a regular basis, if you look at on all the containers over the counter, acid suppression medications, they say don't take for more than 14 days besides physician supervision. So you want to be careful about taking these medicines without a physician supervision. But people with chronic reflux disease who also have been maybe prescribed medications by their physicians on a long-term basis should be aware that it is not stopping the reflux disease. It is not a treatment. It is a management of the most common symptom, which is heartburn, while the reflux continues. So they should be aware that it is not a treatment, but a management of a symptom. Then what are the treatments? Treatment would depend uh, on fixing a valve in the bottom part of the esophagus to the stomach. Normally, the pressure in the stomach is always more than the esophagus. Liquid from the stomach will come up into the esophagus, and it does not come up in everybody every day because there is a barrier, a valve that prevents it. If the barrier is not working well, then it will allow the contents to come up. In a percentage of people with long-term reflux disease, fixing that barrier is an alternative, but before that, I think people should manage their lifestyles. Don't eat late at night, keep the head of the bed up, lose a little bit of weight. It's surprising how 10 to 20 pounds weight loss will make a difference in their reflux symptoms. But if these uh, methods of lifestyle changes do not work and or a person is on lifelong medication, they should consider getting some surgical intervention to stop the reflux definitively. Last thing, in your estimation, doctor, if someone has severe reflux disease and they've been on medication for many years, what are the chances of them developing Barrett's? Well, Barrett's is, uh, develops in a small percentage of people, maybe about 3 to 7% of people with long-term reflux disease. And it is recommended that they sh anybody with reflux for longer than five years, especially males, should get an endoscopy to rule out that they have Barrett's esophagus. However, I think the management of reflux disease should be beyond just getting worried about Barrett's esophagus. It's a big quality of life issue. We spend a lot of resources on uh, treating a symptom of heartburn, but I think there are a lot of other symptoms such as coughing at night, hoarseness, waking up with reflux at night. I think they should be addressed uh, more definitively rather than just continuing medication. Dr. Middle, great information. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thanks folks. And if you'd like to learn more, just call the phone number right there on your screen or click the link we have provided, and we'll see you next time.